As our final video, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about string quartets and kind of getting underneath the surface. And the first question is, what makes a sensational string quartet? You've played so many um, ones from hundreds of years ago to current ones, composers writing for you. And what, what's really fantastic about it? Um, I think writing something that feels really, really good to play for the players is going to get the best out of a quartet and then as much contrast as possible. Um, we love, I mean, everyone loves contrast because that's what we look for in, in life. And so unless you're going for a specific effect, which is something that is absolutely zero contrast, something that is, uh, feels inspiring to play that has ex just has almost the the perfect balance of demanding but not so demanding that it makes you not want to practice it because it's too difficult but also that there's enough interest that keeps you interested to want to play it over and over again yeah i would say um well with any music something that makes it sensational is something that you really want to listen to um, and be or so, maybe something you don't want to listen to but something that moves you in some way that's really hard to put your finger on isn't it but um, some, some, I think as a composer I think people sort of should think about what it is they're trying to portray to the audience and what they want them to experience and the sort of balance like Ben said of all the different things that we can have and the contrast and the harmony and just something that makes you feel something could you offer your composers quartets that you might want them or encourage them to listen to that kind of could inspire them or find something new, a new vocabulary and how they might, you know, portray their music? Um, I would encourage people to listen to Bartok's first string quartet because he really, he shook things up and started to create um, a new sort of language and use of textures had a really, really bold and democratic way of writing for the quartet. That although there'd been examples of that before, there is a, um, an, a wonderful combination of sort of freedom of expression, um, but new tonal language and incredible part writing. I'd say Janatek is very innovative as well, and his quartet Intimate Letters takes you on a very exciting journey, and it's kind of becomes more than music, it's more like an experience. I'm going classical with Beethoven's Opus 131, and uh, despite it being a classic, there's, there's few works of classical music that change the world more than that. And they always say your favorite piece is what you're playing at the moment, which for us is Eleanor Alberga's String Quartet Number no. 2 is absolutely brilliant. It is full of everything and incredibly difficult to play, but the rhythm and it's got, it's literally got everything. It's soulful, rhythmic, exciting, terrifying, brilliant. Composers might not quite understand how a string quartet, the dynamics, the personal dynamics work. You know, how do you, who leads? Does anyone lead? You know, who pitches in? How do you create this, you know, homogeneity of sound? How does that actually work? I think, especially for me sitting in the middle, maybe, the, the leader is always changing. And the leader, essentially, I guess, is whoever is carrying the, the melody, the tune. And we will default to Ben if there isn't somebody else who clearly has that leading role. And then in terms of balancing, we're constantly, as we're playing, constantly reassessing where we should be in the mix, whether we are the leading line or um, a secondary melodic line or some kind of accompaniment. And obviously there's those roles that we often have with our roles as first, second viola and cello on the bass. But uh, as I say, those are constantly shifting. So it's a constant re-evaluation, I think, that's live and can change from performance to performance as well. Well, thank you so much for your play and hopefully you'll inspire composers to write new music and keep music alive. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.